Hiya, how are you doing? Today, as part of my extended event series, I'm going to show you how to record timeouts in SQL Server using extended events. I'm going to show you exactly how to create the extended event, I'm going to show you how to recreate it, and I'm going to explain exactly how SQL Server records and views timeouts to show exactly what they are. If you like that and you like extended events, have a look at my channel because I've got loads more on there. I've got a little few more extended events tutorials for you. And if you do like it, give me a like and let me know your feedback in the comments below. Enjoy. Here I'm going to show you how to record timeouts in SQL Server using extended events. First off, I want to clear up some confusion among some people. With this setting in SQL Server, under Connections tab, we've got 600 seconds, which to the math geniuses out there is 10 minutes. And that's remote query timeout. This does not apply in this case. A remote query timeout is when your instance of SQL Server is making an external call, so it's calling out to another SQL Server instance. And if it exceeds this setting here, then it will stop running. So how long that query is going to wait until it's got everything it needs or until the connection is killed. If it isn't killed in that time, it will time out unless you set it to zero, which isn't advisable. But that's, that isn't being looked at on this extended event because we're only concerned about incoming queries and when they time out. Let's cancel that. And down here, under extend events, under sessions, we've got timeouts. Now, as far as SQL Server is concerned, a timeout is an aborted transaction. Sometimes you have applications that might connect into your SQL Server, and in the connection string, it might have timeout settings of 10 minutes, 12 minutes. SQL Server is unaware of that. It's not interested in that. All it knows is there's a terminate connection here. So if I show you what settings we've got, I've got my storage and I've just called the log file timeouts. Under events, I'm interested in RPC completed and SQL batch completed. You might see those from SQL Profiler before. And we'll go to configure and these are the same settings on both. What we've got, we've got client app name, client host name. We've got, we've got SQL text there. And the filters, the result, so this is our operator, and the result we're looking for is an abort. So any aborted transactions. Exactly the same on this field as well. So let's have a look, we'll watch it live. I'll create a query and let's say that I run select star from sys.databases. You can see the query works fine. We can see that it hasn't timed out. Now, because I'm not that quick, I won't be able to kill this query in time. I'm gonna do a wait. And I'm going to wait 10 seconds. Ordinarily, any query wouldn't have this. It's just I'm putting this in to allow that extra space so that I can kill the query to show a killed, of a killed execution. So I'm going to set this take implicit transactions off. So if I run this for 10 seconds, and after 5 seconds, let's say it times out, and I'll kill it. We've now got our timer it's showing us that. And these are the values that we've got here. And as I showed you earlier, if you wanted, you can add in further fields. But I think these are the best ones. CPU time, duration is a really, really handy one because if it gets to 10 minutes or 30 minutes from an application, you know that's probably the application that's stopping that transaction. We've got SQL text so we can look at the code, whether that's a stored procedure or add code. And we've got the client app name so we can see what exactly is timing out. 
and obviously the timestamp so we know when. So what, this, what we can do with this, we can start to look at reoccurring themes because obviously, let's run this again a few more times um, just to get a few more fields in there. So if I kill that, um, I'll kill this. That should appear in here. We can see those two running. And what I can start to do, I can start to, you can't group it here, you have to open it down here. But if I start to group this, I can see well, this application here is, keeps timing out. Or I can look at, I can look at the text that's, that might be grouped, or I can look at, we can see there's a lot of timeouts here. We can start to troubleshoot and fix problems as we go forward. So obviously, as always, let me know if you've got any questions with this timeout. The important thing to take from this is that as far as SQL Server is concerned, a timeout is an aborted transaction. Now you might want to exclude certain applications like this one, but certainly put this in your environment to see what problems you've got that you probably aren't aware of. If you've got any questions, hit me in the comments. If you've got any suggestions, put them in the comments and I really appreciate your feedback. Thank you all.